WXII 12 News at 4 starts right now. We got over there, the keys were in the switch, and she was nowhere to be found. Search is on for a missing woman from Mount Airy, new here at 4, a desperate plea from her family wanting her to come home safe. Plus three mass shootings in California in just three days. What we are learning about the latest attack that left seven people dead. And new this evening, pile after pile of leaves still sitting on the streets of Winston-Salem. What homeowners are starting to do after waiting and waiting for the city to pick them up. Those stories in a moment, but first we're keeping a close eye on the forecast. Right now, let's take a live look at our Winston-Salem sky cam. Well, beautiful day, clear, cool across the triad. Tomorrow, though, will be very different. Wednesday is a WXII 12 first warning weather impact day. Meteorologist Michelle Kennedy is in the Weather Center with what we can expect. Michelle. Well, I wish we could keep some of that sunshine around, but it looks like right now we've got those chilly temperatures and those 30s out there for you right now with some showers that are going to build by the overnight hour. So after 2 a.m., we're going to notice some light rain and builds to some heavy rain by early around 7 a.m. It becomes an impact hour and we're going to continue that trend all the way through the afternoon. You can see it filling in here from the Gulf of Mexico right now out of our areas of Galveston, Houston. We've got tornado watches. We have snow wrapping in through Oklahoma City and wintry mess for folks up in in Little Rock, Arkansas. So very icky weather for folks there. For us, we're looking at more clouds. We've got temperatures in the 50s and 60s out there, and we're going to be looking at some concerns for wind developing all the way up through Tennessee. The high winds, those are out over areas of New Orleans. They may even see gusts to 55 miles an hour. That doesn't even include the severe weather, so they're ready to get going with some of that severe weather threats uh, continuing through the evening hours and overnight. It'll move our way. You've got the severe weather possibilities here, creating icy roads as we head into the middle sections of the Midwest and then the shower chances building for us after 4 a.m. You can see some heavier rain really getting going between 7 and 10 a.m. Heavy downpours, pockets of heavy rain with 30s and eventually we do get you back into the 50s, but it's going to be the southeastern tribe that sees that warming trend. So a lot of folks may miss out on those warmer temperatures. If you're in the foothills, North Wilkesboro, Yakinville, it may not be as warm for you, but we've got some 60s isolated storms. These storms look less severe than they were earlier. Still a strong one or two, and we wouldn't uh, be surprised to see some of those rumbles of thunder. We're going to have much more for you and break down the rainfall timing. It's all coming up. Now to California this evening, a state under attack after three mass shooting in the last three days. In all, 19 people have been killed. More than a dozen have been injured. The deadliest of the attacks unfolding in communities just outside of San Francisco and Los Angeles. Jay Gray is in Monterey Park outside the first of the three murder scenes with the latest. California reeling right now. Communities in the northern and southern parts of the state dealing with horrific mass shootings. We're just in absolute shock and disbelief um, that this occurred and our heart goes out to the victims and their families. 11 gunned down in Monterey Park while celebrating the Lunar New Year, one of the most significant holidays in the Asian community. To enjoy, to be family, and then someone just come out of the blue and just destroy the whole thing. In Half Moon Bay, just outside of San Francisco, seven workers murdered on the job at two mushroom farms. What a tragedy to see these innocent people lose their lives. And right now we just don't have the answers yet. Investigators aren't sure of the motive in any of the shootings, but say none appear to be acts of terror or hate crimes. The attacks in Monterey Park and Half Moon Bay aren't connected, but do have very unique similarities. Both suspects, elderly Asian Americans armed with semi-automatic handguns. Police say the killing sprees were likely fueled by a grudge or personal vendetta with a vast majority of the victims, members of the Asian American community, and they share one more horrible similarity. <laughs> Survivors in each community now struggling with the pain of overwhelming loss. Jay Gray, NBC News, Monterey Park, California. 
New at four, one person is dead after a shooting in Greensboro. And we are told this happened around five o'clock this morning on Larkin Street. This is just off of MLK Drive and Benbow Road. Officers found Jordan Little shot. He died from his injuries. And right now, there is no information on a suspect or what may have led up to this shooting. There's a $5,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest. If you can help, call Crime Stoppers at 336-373-1000. And the family of a missing Mount Airy woman is pleading for her to come home. 41-year-old Rebecca Hawks was last seen last week after her car ran out of gas. WXII 12's Maria DeBone joins us live at the Mount Airy Police Department. And Maria, what did her sisters tell you? Well, Rebecca Hawk's sisters tell me they last heard from her on Wednesday when she said her car ran out of gas and she needed someone to come bring her some. And when they got to her location, they found her keys in the ignition, but no Rebecca. Now, Rebecca's car was last seen in the area of Westlake Drive near Boggs Drive in Mount Airy. She was wearing a black shirt and blue jeans. Rebecca's sister said they're worried about her because she just had a procedure done where she needs to take medication. And they said they did receive a text from another person's phone who said this was Rebecca. And when they asked for the person who claims to be Rebecca to call them, there was no response. Now, Mount Airy police are investigating at this time and don't believe any foul play is, is suspected. And her sisters say they're not sure if she ran away, but are worried and just want to know that she's safe. Just contact us. This, if she doesn't want to come home, that's fine, but contact us. Contact her daughter. Her daughter is missing her so much and, just, and that we love her. And if she makes the decision not to contact us, we still love her anyway, but just contact us. Just reach out to us. And Mount Airy police said they're doing everything to make sure Rebecca is safe and still asking the community if you know any information to contact them. Live in Mount Airy, Maria DeBone, WXII 12 News. Thank you, Maria. It is almost the end of January and people still have leaves that need to be collected. The city of Winston-Salem says it's doing what it can. WXII 12's Joshua Davis spoke with homeowners here in Winston-Salem. Homeowners in one Winston-Salem neighborhood say instead of waiting for the city to collect their leaves, they just decided to do it themselves. Ken Neer has lived in a neighborhood off of Yadkinville Road for 10 years. He put leaves on the curb in October and then again right before Christmas, and they stayed there until recently. He says the city usually collects leaves three times a year in his neighborhood, but last year they only went through once. Eventually, he and his neighbors decided to collect the leaves in their neighborhood because nobody else was doing it. It, it didn't happen for various reasons. Some, I'm sure, were legitimate and all this, but where were you? What was the next step? If you couldn't do this, what were you going to do? And I, I think there was just basically, there wasn't a, a, a fallback step at all. The assistant city manager says the delays in leaf collection are due to the timing of the leaves falling in weather as well as equipment issues. He says each resident will still get three different pickups and the city is working on plans to improve the process. In Winston-Salem, Joshua Davis, WXII 12 News. Joshua, thank you. New at four, the $26 billion opioid settlement is now making its way into the hands of local governments. Guilford County will receive nearly $22 million over the next 18 years to help those addicted to opioids. But the chair of Guilford County's Board of Commissioners says he wants to do more. Skip Alston says he's, his plan would include $38 million in federal money from the American Rescue Plan to buy two buildings, one for a rehab center, the other for a homeless shelter. All right, Alston goes on to say that he also wants Guilford County to increase its annual budget by some $2 million to help fight drug addiction and homelessness. County commissioners will discuss the plans when they hold a retreat next week at the Burmill Club. In Greensboro, streets back open around the scene of a fire on Oakland Avenue. Crews responded shortly before 4.30 this morning. We are told the building is where Smith Trucking Company is located. The fire department tells us no injuries have been reported, but at last check, crews had still not been able to enter that building. No word on what may have caused this fire. 
Happening now, friends, family, teammates, and fans are saying goodbye to a former Charlotte FC player. A celebration of life for Anton Walks just wrapped up moments ago. It was held at Bank of America Stadium, and he died last week in a boating accident in Florida. He was just 25 years old. The English native was selected by Charlotte FC in the 2021 MLS expansion draft in the team's debut campaign. Also happening this evening, folks in the triad will gather to honor a local trailblazer. Annie Brown Kennedy's wake is scheduled for 6 p.m. at First Baptist Church on Highland Avenue here in Winston-Salem. Her funeral service will be held tomorrow at Wake Chapel at Wake Forest University. Happening now, classified documents have been found in the home of another political figure. Former Vice President Mike Pence's lawyer says documents with classified markings were found in Pence's home last week. The lawyer said the documents had been, quote, inadvertently boxed and transported to Pence's home at the end of the Trump administration. He said Pence is ready and willing to cooperate with the National Archives and investigators. Coming up, some school buses in the triad are going electric. How this new change could end up cutting costs for the county and which school districts are planning to adopt this new change. Plus, one city is giving away heaters where you can get the gift of warmth in the triad this week at no cost to you.